Hello everyone, today I'm going to show you how to make the Gatling antenna for 5.8 GHz. Some time ago I made this Gatling antenna here. As you can see it's a quadruple array of four crosshairs antenna. And I made this with the help of a four-way splitter. This is a mini circuits four-way splitter for the 5.8 GHz frequency. It does a good job but this splitter is expensive and it's heavy. Once the bad lead of the four-way splitter is removed, the inside looks like this. So we all know every antenna is 50 ohms, so the feed here is 50 ohms. The 50 ohms gets divided into two 25 ohms. Each 25 ohms then goes through a quarter wave transformer, which is basically a microstrip of one quarter wavelength 50 ohms and the transformer transforms the 25 ohms to 100 ohms. The 100 ohms then gets divided into 250 ohms and then we arrive at 450 ohms here which are our four crosshair antennas. Now this is the new Gatling antenna that I made recently and this time I decided to try a different way of placing the four crosshair antennas together. Instead of relying on the four-way 5.8 GHz splitter, I built my own facing harness to face the four crosshair antennas together. Let's work backwards. 250 ohms merged together becoming a 25 ohms. And then the two 25 ohms each goes through a one quarter wavelength 50 ohms cable to become 100 ohms. 200 ohms merge together and we arrive at 50 ohms, which is a perfect antenna. If you notice, the braided wires are not soldered yet in this photo. So, practically, we have a dipole antenna which is active because this is a quarter wave and this is another quarter wave. So it's essential to shield the signal wires and to do that, I cut a thin piece of copper sheet to wrap around the signal wires. After shielding the signal wires, I then added hot glue to strengthen the joints. This is how the Gatling antenna looks like when mounted on my VRX. Unfortunately, it could not deliver the kind of range that I've expected. The poor performance I'm getting is most likely due to poor impedance matching and that is caused by the incorrect lengths of wires used here. This 50 ohms coaxial has to be exactly quarter wavelength but at microwave frequencies it's extremely hard to get the lengths right unless we have a factor network analyzer. Luckily I found a way of overcoming this challenge. Basically I use a cheap PCB circular antenna. This circular patch antenna costs about 6 USD and if you notice it has a matching network in the middle which is perfect for facing my four crosshair antennas. It came across to me that if I could disconnect the four elements from the matching network I could use the matching network to face four crosshair antennas. Using a rotary tool, I was able to grind away some of the copper elements here so that the patch is disconnected from the matching network. I grind it very carefully to ensure that I maintain the feed line as intact as possible. So as you can see here, the four patches are disconnected and this would be the solder points for connecting my crosshair antennas. Now the next question that comes to my mind is, is there a particular way of facing the crosshair antennas? Do I hook up the crosshairs to any of the four joints or is there a pattern that I should follow? Well, the answer is yes, 
because if you notice this patch is rotated 90 degrees from this one which means that the signal would arrive later for this patch to make sure that the signal reach both patches at the same time this line has to be 90 degrees shorter than this one so on my crosshair antenna this crosshair is in the same orientation as this one here and this has the same orientation as this so these two crosshairs will have to go to this and this same orientation and then the other two crosshairs will have to go to this and this once again the same orientation so that will ensure that the delay is compensated accordingly and the signal will arrive on the same time for all the four crosshairs antennas another point I would like to highlight is that I have drilled four holes on the PCB to allow the braided wires of each coaxial to go through the PCB to make contact with the ground plane of the PCB board which is on the back side of this PCB with patience and perseverance I managed to solder successfully all four crosshairs as you can see here and the last part is to shield the exposed signal wires this part of the matching network this is one quarter wave and this is another quarter wave so it is practically an active dipole as I mentioned before and it has to be shielded to do that I use aluminum foil and this works very well although it looks ugly it works extremely well This is the completed gut link 5.8 and this is the 5.8 crosshair from True RC. And the standing wave ratio for the True RC tuned crosshair is about 1.35 of my VSWR meter. So basically I calibrate this meter using a tuned antenna and then I measure the Gatling antenna and surprisingly it has an even lower reading which is about 1.15 so does this matching network actually work? let's find out